Hi everyone, my name is Laura and I will be hiking the Appalachian Trail in 2023. As you know, I have been reviewing and going over my gear picks for my um, upcoming through hike or through hike attempt, I guess I should say. For an overview of my big three gear picks, click right here. Today I will be sharing kind of the specs, the nitty gritty of one of my big three gear picks, which is my pack. So first off, if you actually missed my big three gear video last week, you wouldn't know, but I did pick the Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60 liter backpack. Here she is in all of her glory. <laughs> so um, if you just want a general overview, definitely go ahead to that other video. This one's gonna be sharing a lot of details, the nitty gritty, the actual information. I'm sorry, my cat just jumped at me through the tablecloth. <laughs> he is just against me filming my YouTube videos. So the actual cost of this pack is $285. I purchased the medium size pack and it came with a medium size belt, which I kept because I thought that would fit my sizing. If you're looking at this pack, definitely check the website because they have all kinds of information on different sizing opportunities since it is an online company. They don't have a storefront that I'm aware of. You kind of have to do the sizing and measuring yourself. So definitely check that out. But for me, a medium seemed best. I am on that borderline of I could fit into a large pack size, but I figured I'd start with a medium and if I needed to switch down, I would go to a large and medium has worked well for me so far. The weight of this pack is 30.5 ounces, which if you are into grams, that is 165 grams. So they say for your big three, you wanna stay under the three pound mark for every single one of those big three items. And this one definitely fits the bill. It is under three pounds. The capacity of the pack is 60 liters, as in the name, Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60 liter. The main compartment of the pack holds 36 liters and the rest of the liters comes from the pockets, which ends up being about 24 liters. Now, if you are new into backpacking, then you probably don't know about carrying capacity, but if you're familiar, then you know that that's the weight in which you can um, pretty much maximize the load. And then there's a comfort rating for what you should keep it under if you want it to be comfortable. So the maximum kind of load is basically like the pack shouldn't break if it's underneath this. Um, but if you filled up to that point, it might start to get some major wear and tear just from the weight of your items being put in the pack. So the max carrying capacity is about 35 pounds and the comfort is about 30 pounds. So currently right now, I'm sitting at a base weight of around 19-ish pounds. Um, and so I think that'll work out perfectly with food. It'll add, let's say another 10 pounds or so. So that'll be at that comfortable carrying capacity of 30 pounds. Fingers crossed that I can keep it less than that at all times, but we'll see. The height of this pack is 22 inches. The width of this pack is 11 inches and the depth is seven inches. So that's kind of the specs of the pack. Now let's get into the extra features, the good stuff. So this pack comes with a very large main compartment that you can hold a lot of stuff in. Trust me, I have packed and repacked this pack and figured out kind of a game plan of how I plan to pack everything that I need for the six months I'll be out there um, into it and it, it holds a lot of stuff. This pack also comes with seven exterior pockets. It has one large mesh pocket in the front. It also comes with a zippered pocket in the top of the pack. So this is actually the very tippity top. On the sides of the pack, it comes with one tall pocket. Um, this pocket is very, it almost goes up to the top of the pack. So um, you can fit a lot of stuff in here that's like longer, perfect for trekking pole storage if you need to. There's actually some little, holes at the bottom here that you can kind of stick the like tips through, but um, I don't trust anything like that. So I stick the tips out of the top. On the opposite side of the pack, it comes with two um, smaller size pockets and smaller meaning like height wise, they're not smaller width wise. It comes with one on the top. You can see here I can fit my whole hand in it comfortably. And then one on the bottom that's kind of perfect for putting water bottles in it does fit two smart water bottles for those of you who are using that method for 
your water filtration. Um, it's kind of it's kind of great. And the last two pockets are your hip belt pockets. These are pretty large zippered pockets. There's one on each side of the hip belt. Um, I also can fit a lot of stuff in there as well. So those are handy dandy for sure. On the front of my pocket, I ended up deciding to add a couple of features onto this. These are not sold with the um, pack, but they are sold by Gossamer Gear as well. So I decided to add on a water bottle holder and a phone slash just like big pocket, but I plan on putting my phone in there, but I think they just call it like a pocket. A big pocket or something like that now i originally purchased a water bottle sleeve um, from justin ul and that was a great water bottle sleeve unfortunately i couldn't fit it on this pack um to fit his on you have to do this um undo the like bottom clasp here and i just couldn't get it undone from this pack so I ended up um, getting the one from the Gossamer Gear website because I figured the Gossamer Gear website, you would have to be able to fit the water bottle holder on their pack. So I went with theirs and I ended up gifting my um, Justin UL one to my um, hiking partner and she, I'm sure it's gonna just love it. I think she put it on one of her packs already to do a day hike and I, I think it went well. I'll have to double check on that, but I'm sure it did. It, it's a great water bottle holder. So this water bottle holder is actually called a bottle rocket. It costs $22 from Gossamer Gear. It weighs 1.35 ounces, so it does add a little bit of weight, but it's not too, too much to where you're like killing your base weight, you know? It says it's supposed to fit the 500 milliliter bottles all the way up to a one liter bottle. Um, unfortunately, the one liter bottle is very tough to get inside this pocket, but the, um, 700 milliliter smart bot water bottle is what I think I'm gonna keep in here and those fit pretty well, so. Like I mentioned before, I also did add a large shoulder strap pocket. This is also from Gossamer Gear. It costs $22 as well and it weighs 1.75 ounces. So altogether it was about three ounces I added for these extra pockets and extra storage. Um, I do plan on putting my phone in here um, unless it's raining. I still might keep it in there. I think I'm gonna carry like an extra, extra Ziploc bag to keep it in there as well. But from what I've heard, this is pretty fairly waterproof or water resistant, I guess I should say. Um, so I'm excited to use that. And it does have a little mesh pocket in the front. I think I'm gonna keep either like my hand sanitizer in there or maybe like headphones or something. We'll, we'll see, I'm not too sure about this little small pocket in the front yet, but. I'm excited and it, and it zippers, by the way. It does also have these little loops on the side. I'm not really sure what you would use them for, but yeah. Now on the back of the pack, this pack actually comes with a built-in and detachable sit pad, I guess you could call it. It is a sit pad according to their website. Um, now I have taken this thing out and used this backpack on a section hike. Um, I actually filmed it on my other channel, so I'll link those that playlist for you guys if you want to check it out. But um, this this sit pad is is pretty decent. I mean, it's it's foam, so it's very lightweight. Um, but what I found is it was kind of hard to get in and out of the like mesh pockets in here. You kind of have to like shove them in and like. The texture of it just kind of makes it like stuck and it doesn't go in very easily. It's easy to take out, just putting it back in is kind of tough. Um, so I personally am gonna bring an extra sit pad. Um, I may get rid of it at some point to lower some weight, but to start off with, I'm gonna bring an extra sit pad, but just to let you guys know that this pack does come with a built-in that you can remove sit pad and put back in. Um, it does add um, some comfort to the back of the pack. And the pack does come with a hydration pouch area that you can stick like, um, I don't know what they call them, those like hydro flask things or, no, they call them camelbacks, like those camelback bladders, like water bladders you can stick in there. Um, and it has a little spot at the top that you could put like a tube to come out to drink like a straw. Um, I personally won't be using that method because I'm not a big fan of that, but it does have the option if that's something that you are looking for in a pack. And one of the things that I have found is awesome about this pack, and I haven't tested it out myself, but apparently these hip belts can actually be removed from the backpack itself. And you can use it as almost a like slack pack situation. Like if I wanna just carry a few snacks with me, maybe like a water bottle, attach it to like 
here or whatever, I can do that and then have a slack pack and not have to carry the whole thing. So um, I like that feature. Like I said, I haven't tested it out yet, but that's what I've heard. So we'll see. I'll let you guys know if I ever test it out. I'm sure I will. And we'll, we'll check it out together. <laughs> Why not? And I did quickly want to mention the color. I do. I did get the gray and blue option. Um, that is like the main one that they have on their website. But they do have a green option. From what I've heard, it sells out very quickly. And it was currently sold out when I bought it. And when I double checked to see all the like information I'm sharing in this video, it was also sold out. So I think the green one is a little bit harder to get. Um, and this gray one, I mean, I like gray. I'm a gray person, as you can tell, you know, my, my walls are gray, <laughs> wearing a gray shirt, so yes. So the last thing I kind of wanted to go over is just share with you guys, like kind of like my thoughts now that I have used this pack on a section hike and I've used it on day hikes. I feel like I'm more seasoned with the pack now. I've had it for a while. So I just wanted to share like my personal opinions, take them for what they are. What did they say? Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> so like I said, I have taken this pack out on a five day section hike fully loaded out I've taken it out on day hikes fully loaded out um, So I do have some experience with it. No, I haven't taken it out on a through hike apparent, you know, obviously but um, I do have some like experience with it. So personally from what I have experience with the pack once i start to get over the like 25 pound mark is when it starts to get a little uncomfortable for me when i have it sitting at that 25 mark or under it's a very comfortable pack all day my shoulders don't hurt the next day you, like you know when you first go out on like a section hike or like a little hiking day all right cat you know when you go out on those section hikes or day hikes like i said um and you wear your pack for a while your your shoulders start to hurt i know my collarbones start to hurt um when i have this pack under that like 25 pound mark it doesn't do that but when i start to get over that 25 pound mark is when it starts to get a little bit uncomfortable and I, i'll notice after a few hours of wearing it it starts to get sore and then maybe sometimes the next day my collarbones will be sore so i'm gonna try my best to keep it at that 25 pound mark or under but you know with food and water if i have to do like longer sections it's gonna be a little bit harder when i go out for this through hike to keep it under there like i know the first section we're gonna do is like a five day possibly four day section so i'm gonna have to have a lot of food so I'm, there's no way i'm gonna keep it under 25 pounds but just something for me to keep in mind and something for you guys to think about if you're purchasing this pack um personally for me the 25 pound mark is more the comfort rating than the 30 pounds but yeah also maybe once i get more conditioning 30 pounds will be fine but for now 25 pounds is is my comfort rating <laughs> um i also know that this pack does have load lifters i don't know if i mentioned that earlier but it does have load lifters and it took me a while to kind of get the hang of it and i feel like i'm still kind of getting the hang of those um and i'm kind of still figuring out how to distribute the weight best um you know how tight should i have my straps and all those things like i did mention that my collarbones do get sore sometimes when i have it fully 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 loaded out with like all food and water and stuff and um obviously i don't want that happening for a full six months so that's something i'm still playing around with i feel like i got it figured out a little bit more i'm just not really using the load lifters i'm kind of keeping them fully like unloaded i guess um but if you guys have any tips on that please let me know because i'm i'm still learning i'm still new so if you guys know how to use these tools um let me know this pack is also pretty light compared to other packs that have frames in them like i said this i, I, I mean i guess you can consider this a framed pack it does have a frame on the inside but it's very small like i know my hiking partner she has an osprey i believe i'll double check with her and i'll put the name here what the exact one she has but her pack, when I put it on, I went to visit her um, a few months ago. I put it on and I felt like that thing was like fully supported on its own. There was no like wiggle room. Like it was just like framed, like it, that was it. This one, it has a smaller frame. So it's like framed, but like not really. So because of that smaller frame, it does lend itself to be a lighter pack, which is good. And it still has a frame to where like, I'm not gonna have like, 
I don't know, packs of ramen sticking in my back. Overall, I will say that it seems to be like a middle ground between a like full suspension and a um, frameless pack. It's kind of like in that middle area. Um, so kind of good if you're trying to get the uh, segue into a frameless pack. So basically to summarize this all, I'm very excited to use this pack on my AT through hike. I think it's gonna be just phenomenal. I think it's gonna work really well for me. Um, and if it doesn't, you know, I have extra money saved up or I should have it saved up by the time of the trail. And if I need to switch it out, I switch it out. Um, I think I mentioned in my last video that I do have another pack that um, I could switch it out to. Um, I think this one's better though, so I probably won't switch it out to that and I'd probably end up just getting a different pack, but that probably won't happen because this pack seems to work well for me, so yeah. So I hope this was informative to you guys if you are new into backpacking, hiking, anything like that in general. Um, just giving you guys more information about this pack. I know there's probably tons of videos about this pack out there. Definitely check them out for more information as well. If this video was informative for you, please give it a like. It definitely helps out my channel. Next video, I will be talking a little bit more in depth about my tent and my shelter. So if you're looking forward to that, definitely subscribe. You don't wanna miss out hearing all the specs, the weight, the cost, all that good details. And I guess I'll see you guys next week. Bye.